Today's topic is about projections or projection systems. When I was creating YouTube videos on how to draw a cube, I wanted to use the correct art terminology, but I found out that it's not that simple. So today I will share everything I know about projection systems. There are a lot of fancy terms, so I will explain them, but most importantly, I will try to simplify them as much as possible. These terms are often used in design, architecture, and engineering, but they are also used very often in art. And towards the end, I will show you practical examples how you can apply this knowledge in practice. I will show you my drawing and a page from my sketchbook. So let's go to it. Okay, so we'll cover four different projection systems, which are orthographic projection, oblique projection, axonometric projection, and perspective projection. And whenever I use a word projection, you could easily substitute another word for it, uh, for example, like a system or drawing. So you could easily say oblique projection, or oblique system, or oblique drawing. I think in this context, these would mean the same thing. So the projection system number one is orthographic projection or drawing, and it is actually also known as multi-view projection, which shows two-dimensional drawings of various sides of the 3D object. So you can have maximum six sides of one object. So you have the front view, rear view, the top view, bottom view, left view, and the right view. In art design and architecture, we're usually interested in displaying the front view, the top view, and the right view or the left view, depending on you know what you're presenting. All right, let's go to an example. Uh, here we have a cube, and the orthographic projection of the cube would look like this. And basically, from the position of, of the viewer, from the camera position, uh, we have the front view, which is a square. Then we have the top view, which also would be a square. And then we would have the right view which also would be a square. What happens if we put uh, two cubes on top of each other? So orthographic or multi-view projection, you would have, this would be your front view, this would be your top view, and this would be your right view. Notice that your orthographic projection should consider the correct proportions. Lastly, there are three key terms that are related to orthographic or multi-view projection. They are mostly used by architects. And these are elevation, plan, and section. So what I showed you in those examples was so-called elevation because they show the outside views as the person would see them. But imagine that this cube is a building and you would cut through it like this. And you're looking inside of the cube, you're looking inside of this building, and you can see the inner walls disposition. This would be called a floor plan. Now, if you would cut the building like that instead, um, or the cube, or cube is the building, right? If you would cut it like this, that would be called a section. So these are three terms that are often used by architects. Now, let's go back to our projection systems overview. So, so far, I've explained the orthographic projection and the other three, oblique, axonometric, and perspective projections, are sometimes referred to as a pictorial drawing. And a pictorial drawing represents or presents a three-dimensional object on the two-dimensional paper. In other words, the pictorial drawing shows the object has a depth. Two-dimensional object has height and width, and three-dimensional object has height, width, and depth. It creates the feeling of space in our drawing. Basically, the aim of a pictorial drawing is to help you visualize the 3D object. And I will come back to it, I will come back to this when I show you how to you know, apply this knowledge in practice. So we have three types of pictorial drawings, and the first two, the oblique and axonometric projections, are also known as parallel projections. And that is because when you draw them, the edges of the object are parallel. And as a result, you know, you can feel that there is, uh, there is depth in your drawing, but it is not displayed in the, in the way your eyes would normally perceive it. Basically, uh, these objects don't look photorealistic. Uh, they don't look like actual photos. Uh, it will become clear what I mean when I show you actual examples. So parallel drawings are non-perspective projections, 
And the third type of the pictorial drawing is perspective drawing. So the projection system number two, oblique projection or drawing. As I already mentioned, the oblique projection can be considered as a pictorial drawing uh, because it captures all three dimensions and also belongs to the parallel drawing because of its characteristics. Now, there are two main types of oblique projection, elevation oblique projection and plan oblique projection. And the plan oblique projection is sometimes referred to as a military projection because it creates a feeling that you're looking at the object from the top. But I will not explain this projection in detail. You can look it up uh, if you want to later. I want to focus on the elevation oblique projection, which is more practical. Now, annoyingly, <laughs> the elevation oblique projection has uh, another subcategories with fancy names like cavalier or cabinet projections, but we're not going to worry about these. We will simplify this to the main principle. Now, I know there are many of these fancy terms, so it is absolute mayhem, but don't worry, I will summarize what is important to know and to use in practice towards the end. So let's go straight into the example. When you do elevation oblique projection, there are two main principles. And the first principle is that you draw the whole front side as it would appear in the front view. So in other words, you draw the front side as if you were directly facing it. So as if you were directly looking at it. So in this case, in this case of a cube, we've already established that the front view is, is a square. So you would firstly draw a square. The second principle is that when you create depth, when you uh, draw the oblique edges, uh, these edges would be parallel to each other. So first you choose an angle, uh, for example, like 30, 45 or 60 degrees, and then you will draw the edges as parallel lines. And by doing so, you're creating depth, but it does not look photorealistic uh, because the oblique lines are parallel. And that is the reason why it's called a paraline. Now, just like that, you know, you will create the oblique projection. Moving on to the projection uh, system number three, axonometric projection or drawing. Again, axonometric projection can be considered as a pictorial drawing or a paraline drawing. We already know what these terms mean. And there are three main types of axonometric projections, and those are isometric, diametric, and trimetric. And, you know, sometimes people refer to this group as uh, isometric instead of axonometric projection, but isometric projection is a specific type or, or a subcategory of the axonometric projection. It has very specific characteristics in relation to the projected angles. So that is basically what differentiates these types. It's the characteristics around the angles. So let's go into a practical example. So when you draw an object in axonometry, you start with drawing the edge first, because the edge is closest to the viewer. And then all the oblique lines going to the right should be parallel to each other. And all the oblique lines going to the left should be parallel to each other. And that's what makes it a parallel line. And in other words, you know, the edges are neither converging nor diverging. And again, basically, it is a non-perspective projection. So we feel the depth in our drawing, but it is not photorealistic. You can choose the angles under which, you know, the left and right oblique lines are parallel with each other. And that basically determines the type of the axonomic projection. So if you do the if you if you do the um, the front edge in the middle, and you would do then uh, 30 degrees on the left, 30 degrees on the right, or basically 30 degrees on both sides, you would create the isometric projection. So we covered the first three projections, and let's quickly introduce the last one, which is the most important one, and that is perspective projection. And the reason why it's most important is because if you draw perspective correctly, it reflects how the object really looks when you look at it in real life. It is photorealistic. And there are three main types of perspective projections. And those are one-point perspective, two-point perspective, and three-point perspective. And let's see an example of each of these types. So in one point perspective, um, it is, it, that would be very similar to the oblique projection or 
to be more specific to the elevation oblique projection because again you will see the whole front view so in the in the case of a cube you will see a square but then the oblique lines going backwards that create depth are no longer parallel instead they're all going to one point called a vanishing point on the horizon and because these edges are going to one point that's the reason why it's called one point perspective so moving to the second example of uh, of the two point perspective drawing uh, this is very similar to the axonometric projection because as in the axonometric projection the viewer faces the edge in other words the edge is closest to you and as before uh, the difference between the two uh, is in the lines that create the depth the oblique lines are no longer parallel and this time the, the left oblique lines are going to the first vanishing point and all of the right oblique lines would go to the second vanishing point on the horizon so we have two vanishing points on the horizon and that's the reason why it's called two-point perspective in all of these examples I have shown you so far the, the vertical line or the vertical lines of the object are 100% vertical and uh, that basically means that the vertical lines will be parallel to the edge of your paper if you were drawing it now imagine that you would tilt the vertical lines like this you were, tilt the object like that the lines would no longer be vertical and uh, what it then means is that if you want to draw this you would have to use a third vanishing point which no longer lies on the eye level horizon and you would have to use this third vanishing point to, to draw this cube like this so again if you if you're curious about how to draw these things I've done a lot of videos on how to draw cubes uh, or how to draw things in general there's probably a, a art tutorial on my youtube channel so you can you can check it out later or you can have a look in the description below so how to use this knowledge in practice so first i will summarize the terms and their principles that i think you should remember i will try to be practical so i think you should know that there is orthographic drawing which is 2d drawings of the object's sides and if you do this actively you should aim to show at least the front view the top view and one of the side views in your drawing in the correct proportions to each other then you should know that there is oblique drawing that presents the front view as you would see it in the orthographic projection and then it uses oblique lines under a chosen angle which are parallel to each other although the oblique uh, lines are parallel it still creates a feeling of depth or space in our drawing so the drawing appears to be three-dimensional the third projection is an axonometric drawing in which we start with the edge and all the oblique lines going to the left will be parallel to each other under a chosen angle and all the lines going to the right would also be parallel to each other under a chosen angle and the drawing would appear three-dimensional the last projection is the most powerful one because it makes the object look the most realistic and that is the perspective projection here we need the horizon and all the oblique lines are going into vanishing point or vanishing point depending on the perspective type in other words the oblique lines that create depth are converging towards vanishing point or points lastly if you know what a paraline or, or pictorial drawings are that is definitely a plus so pictorial drawing is a drawing of an object in three dimensions in 3d paraline drawings are oblique and axonometric drawings because the oblique lines that create depth are parallel to each other but the most important thing is to remember the names of these four projections and be able to recognize them and most importantly use them in practice it is always good to be practical so knowing these terms at the high level should be sufficient but obviously you can study these projections in detail and refer to each projection by the individual type for example if your drawing meets uh, the characteristics of an isometric drawing 
then you can use the specific term instead of the high level term. In the beginning, I promised to show you how you can use this knowledge in practice. So let me show you a page from my sketchbook. And this page is about a proportions of a chair. And I've done this for one of my drawing art tutorials on YouTube. So if you are an artist or designer or an architect, it is good to use the first three projections in your sketchbook because they will help you visualize what the object or your drawing could look like. Uh, or another example is that if you want to show a concept uh, to your clients, then these three projections will help your client understand what the object could look like. But then the perspective drawing sells the whole thing because it gives the most realistic look of the object. So after showing you this page, I would also show you this realistic drawing of a chair in two-point perspective, which would basically sell my initial concept. So the first three projections are ideal for visual explanation of the project, while the perspective projection sells it. Since you managed to watching this until now, I will give you one super practical tip that will help you memorize these terms. When you work on your project, for example, in your sketchbook, keep giving your drawings titles using the correct terminologies. So for example, like what you can see here, if you do it a couple of times, then these names, these terms will become part of your DNA. You will basically never forget them. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the projection systems. I know it was a lot of information. Hopefully I, I simplified it uh, as much as I could. And if you're interested in anything art related, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I basically cover all the topics on art design and architecture, including how to draw or even how to prepare university portfolios. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now.